Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I created a 3D art brush, which I used to create this floral design you see here on my artboard in Adobe Illustrator. Now, first I'll be showing how I made the flat design, and then I'll show you how I took the flat design, applied the 3D effect, and then turned it into an art brush. Let's move to a document where I already have some of these objects already created. I'll go up and grab the yellow ellipse. I'm going to make some copies and rotate this. I'll come up to Effect, down to Distort and Transform, and choose Transform. First, we'll work on the rotation angle. What I want to end up with is eight petals that are equally spaced around a circle. I don't know what the angle should be for those, but I do know that every circle has 360 degrees. So I'll type in 360, followed by the forward slash, which is the divide sign, and then eight, which is the number of petals I want. Next, I'll tell Illustrator where I want the rotation to occur, and we're gonna set it for this center left anchor. So I'll come down to this little icon right here, and each one of these squares represent an anchor on the selected object. And since I want to rotate from the left center anchor, I'm going to click on this left center square. And now it's filled in, so that's where the rotation will occur. And then I'll type in eight for the copies and say OK. And right away, Illustrator does the math, makes the copies, and they're equally spaced around the circle. Now we'll copy this design. I'll hold down the Option key to make a copy and just drag away from the first one. And the copy, I'm going to make a couple of changes. I want the outside anchors to be pointed, so I'll get the Anchor Point tool, keyboard shortcut Shift-C, and click on the outside anchor, and Illustrator applies that point to the entire circle. Then I'll get the Selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and with this design selected, I'm going to come over to the Properties panel, click on the Color Fill icon, and apply this green, and that changes the whole look of this design. Next, I'll select both of the designs and come up to Object, and we're going to expand their appearance. Then I'll select one at a time, come over to the Properties panel, and click to Unite. If I selected both of these at the same time and clicked to Unite, they would actually be linked together, and I don't want that. Next, I'll grab our ellipse and bring it down here, and then select all three of the objects, come over to the Properties panel, and click on Horizontal Align Center, and then Vertical align center. Now my leaves are in front of the petals and I need to change that so I'll select them and move them to the back with the keyboard shortcut shift command left bracket. Now they're still selected and I want to rotate them so they're not covered up by the petals. So I'll get the rotate tool keyboard shortcut R kind of eyeball this and rotate them until it looks like it's about centered and then release my mouse and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and then select all of the objects and group them with the keyboard shortcut, command G. Now it's really important if you're planning on applying a 3D effect that all of your objects are grouped together. I can move this up out of the way, and I'll grab this other ellipse, and I want both the left and the right anchors to be pointed, so I'll get the anchor point tool again, keyboard shortcut shift C, and click on both of these. Then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard to deselect that. I'm gonna drag our stroke down, and I need to make a change to it. I'll go up to object, down to path, and change this to an outline stroke. Then I'm going to rotate the leaf and we'll put it with our stem. I'll get the rotate tool, keyboard shortcut R, and I'll grab hold of the right side of the leaf and I'm going to begin dragging and as I do I'm going to hold the shift key down and that causes my rotation to snap at 45 degree increments and when I feel the snap and I see the 45 degrees I'll release my mouse and then take my finger off of the shift key. Now the reason I saw that 45 degrees in that little gray text box is because I had smart guides turned on. If you go up to view 
down to Smart Guides. You can turn them on here or use the keyboard shortcut Command U. Now I'll get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and I'm going to move the leaf down here to where it intersects with the stem. And then I'll copy the leaf and rotate it. I'll get the Rotate Tool, Keyboard Shortcut R, and right now the Rotate Ball is up here in the center of the leaf, but I want it to rotate right there next to the stem, so I'll take my cursor and click on that anchor, and the Rotate Ball has been moved. Now I'm going to begin to drag down, and once I start dragging, I'll press down on the Option key to make a copy, and the Shift key. And again, we're going to snap in 45 degree increments. When I see that minus 90 degrees, I release my mouse, and then take my fingers off of the Shift and the Option keys, and get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and select both of the leaves, and I'll group them, Keyboard Shortcut Command G. Now I'm going to slide this down just a little bit here, then I'll go up and get the flower and drag it down to where it's in line horizontally with my stem. And I want the center of the flower to line up with the right edge of the stem. And when I see the word intersect, I'll release my mouse. And then I will select all of these objects together and group them with the keyboard shortcut Command G. Now we're going to work on our grass. I'll grab this ellipse. I want the top center anchor to be pointed, so I'll get the Anchor Point Tool, Keyboard Shortcut Shift C, click on this anchor, and then get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V. And I'm going to duplicate this object. I'll hold down the Option key to make the copy and the Shift key to drag in the same horizontal line. And when I see the line through the center of those intersecting, I'm going to release my mouse. And with the copy selected, I'm going to duplicate the move eight more times using the keyboard shortcut Command D. So Command D, 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 and Command D. Then I'll come up and grab the rectangle, and we're going to line these up to where they intersect. Then I'll select all of the objects, come over to the Properties panel, and click to Unite Them. And now I'm ready to apply the 3D effect. I'll click on the artboard to deselect the grass. I come up to Window, click on 3D and Materials to open up our dialog box. And the first thing I need to do is click on Object because we're going to be working with objects. Then I will select my grass and click on Inflate. And immediately Illustrator applies the initial 3D effect. I'll click on the artboard to deselect it, and that's looking pretty good but it's going to look even better when we render it. I'll come up to the top right corner and click on this little icon. It takes a few more seconds, but Illustrator quickly renders this, and you can see how nice and shiny it is. Now I'll select the flower, and we'll do the same thing. We'll first click on Inflate, and then I'll click on the artboard to deselect it and just look at it. Everything looks good, so I'll select it again and come up and click on the icon to render the design. And in a couple of seconds, Illustrator finishes that as well. I'll close out 3D and Materials and click on the artboard to deselect the flower. And now I'm ready to make my art brushes. I'm going to first select these and delete them and get them out of the way. And then I'll move up to Window, down to Brushes. I can also open the panel up with the keyboard shortcut F5, but I'll click here, grab the Brushes tab, and drag and dock it next to the Layers tab over here on the right side of my workspace. When you're making an art brush, the important thing to remember is it's got to be created horizontally, even if it's going to be displayed vertically. I always put the bottom of my design on the left side and the top of my design Design on the right side because I tend to draw from the bottom up, but you can actually have them pointing either direction. Now I'll select the flower, come over to the brushes panel, and click on the new brush icon in the bottom bar. It's a little square with a plus sign in it. This brings up the new brush dialog box, and I'll click Art Brush and say OK. Then I'm going to name this Yellow Flower. 
and instead of stretch to fit stroke length, I'm going to choose stretch between guides so that I can tell Illustrator what part of the design to stretch if I'm applying the pattern brush to a stroke that's wider than the design. So I'll grab the right guide and drag it underneath the leaf so Illustrator will only stretch this plain part of the stem and it won't stretch the design and get it all out of proportion. So I'm going to leave it this way and say OK. Then I'll select the grass, come over to the brushes panel, click on New Brush, choose Art Brush, say OK. I'll name this one Grass and leave Stretch to Fit Stroke Length checked here and say OK. Now I'll select both the designs, move over to the Layers panel and hide these, and then back to the Brushes panel and get the Brush Tool, Keyboard Shortcut B. And I'll start with the Flower Art Brush, so we'll select it, and then I'll drag from the bottom up, and I'm going to keep my line smooth. I want to curve it a little bit so I have a variety in each of the flowers but if I move it around too much, my design will get distorted. And if I don't make it long enough, I'll cut off part of the top design. So if you end up with a stroke you don't like, just delete it and go back and add another one. There. Now I'll get the Line Segment Tool, Keyboard Shortcut, Backslash, and click on the artboard to open up my tool options. I'll leave the length set at 7 inches, the angle at 0 degrees, and say OK. Then get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and I'll move my line centered on this flower. Then go to the Brushes panel and click on the Grass Brush. Let's move this down just a little bit, and here we have our finished design. And I am absolutely loving this effect. I encourage you to play around with all sorts of different shapes and sizes, because there's no end to what you can create with this cool special effect. Just remember, if you have several objects that you're going to apply that effect to together, they all have to be grouped for you to get these results. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned some things about using the Inflate 3B effect and about creating an art brush. I will leave a link to a more in-depth tutorial about art brushes at the end of this video. I also want to invite you to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.